Hello and welcome to the product marketing course at Media Bistro. This is Gerardo Dada. I will be your instructor for the next four classes. This is lesson one about the product marketing role. In this training, we will have four modules. Module one is about the product marketing role. And in this case, it's very important because product marketing is a competency or a task that is not very well understood and many companies do it differently. Most companies who are in product marketing struggle at least a little bit getting the rest of the organization to understand what they're responsible for and what they should be owning and what they shouldn't own. So I think it's very important that we start by being very clear about not only what the product market role should be, but what it could be, what are the skills that are required and how you're gonna grow in that role. Lesson two is about knowledge of the market, the industry and your customers, fundamental knowledge and how you get that knowledge. What are the research tools that are available and some tips about getting that knowledge into your mind and into the organization. Lesson three is about taking that knowledge to segment customers, develop an effective position relative to competitors, and then doing targeting. And lesson four is taking all what we've learned in lessons two and three into powerful messaging, value proposition, and using that to enable sales and launch products through influencers. Great, let me tell you a little bit about me. First, I've been doing marketing since I have memory, since I was in middle school. I have, have been in product marketing formally for the last 15 years. I've been at very large companies, at startups, at turnaround companies, and companies with very fast growth. In the companies you see here, I've been at the center of the web, mobile, social, and cloud revolutions. I consider myself very lucky to have been part of those changes. And I really enjoyed speaking at industry events. I'm usually invited by academic institutions to speak to students of MBA classes. And I enjoy blogging at theadaptivemarketer.com. I hope that you visit my blog. I hope you enjoy it and that uh, you follow me on Twitter. Great, let's get started. This is lesson one. So there are four key goals for this lesson. The first is to understand what is the role of product marketing. In many companies, there's product management as well. There are other marketing functions. So understanding how their roles and responsibilities play with those other teams is fundamental but also learning about the skills back on a career path. It can be for yourself about how do you develop more skills or how do you build a team as well. I am gonna propose a framework that will help you understand the rules and responsibilities between product marketing and other teams. You can modify this framework. It's, it's not gonna fit every company. And there's, we're gonna speak, spend some time talking about product life cycles. My experience has been in B2B and B2C, mostly around technology companies. But most of the concepts that I'm gonna talk about are just as well applied to consumer goods products or services or any other industry uh, in which you might be performing. Great, so let's, let's chat first about the evolution of product marketing. In, in my experience, I've been in, in companies that have had the need to build a product marketing team, have been hired to, to build product marketing organizations and I've seen this happen a couple times. In many cases, especially in technology, product development, the engineer starts doing the marketing. When it's a startup, everybody wears multiple hats. And that works for some time. As a company grows, then they usually hire product managers. And the product managers also do marketing, which is ideal for this situation, but it's not sustainable long term. We'll talk about it when we talk about skills. Then at some point in the growth of the company, they realize that they need product marketing function. And they start by hire, more than hiring a product marketing person, they usually assign, companies usually assign an existing person in the marketing team as a product marketing manager. And their responsibility is usually to launch products, which means basically creating collateral and updating the website. Not what I would like to do in product marketing all the time. Then, Product marketing evolves to own the go-to-market strategy. And that's where most companies are right now. Eventually, product marketing needs to become strategic and accountable for revenue. This is where we want to take product marketing and this is what we're gonna spend most of the day today. Why? Because product marketing has the opportunity, the potential to, do, to be the most powerful group inside most companies. Because it's where strategy and tactics get together and where 
the the company, the team that knows more about customers and about markets can drive the success of the company. Here's a quote from Said Khan, who basically was writing a blog for startups that are in growth phases. And he says that it's more important than ever to have a team that's focused on understanding markets and buyer needs, using that knowledge to ensure your company executes more compelling marketing and sales strategies. Basically a summary of the product marketing function from his perspective. I think it's it's fairly good. I think it's almost, uh, I don't want to say it's perfect, but it's very close to a good definition. So let's chat about what are the product marketing skills that are required. First, I think a good product marketing manager or a product marketing leader needs to have what some people in the industry call T-shaped skills. T-shaped skills means that you need to have very broad knowledge of all the aspects of marketing, from lead generation to social media marketing to influencer marketing to product development methodologies to understanding your customers, knowing the industry, and then go very deep into the product marketing function in the things that are fundamental and core to the product marketing capability. The reason why these T-shaped skills are so important is because you're gonna need the depth to do your product marketing job, but you're gonna need the breadth of the other skills around marketing and business to be able to influence and guide the rest of the company into executing a go-to-market strategy that is based on customer knowledge. And I found, this is my personal take, is that there's a trio of competencies that every part of marketing person must have. When somebody has these three components, it can be extremely powerful and incredibly valuable for any company. The first part is understanding business skills. So a lot of product marketing managers have MBAs or have experience running their own business, understanding the basic fundamentals of how a business runs, financial analysis, and those core concepts is, is critical for a good product marketing manager. Otherwise, you're, you're not going to be successful in the role as we've been describing it today. The second part is broad marketing skills, similar to the T concept, right? You need to understand all the aspects of marketing. You need to be good at marketing strategy. You need to understand how strategies executed. You need to understand how marketing campaigns are run. You need to understand lead management, win-loss analysis, understand sales, etc. And last but not least, you need to have enough technical or industry depth, not necessarily to understand the details of the product you're selling, but to understand the mind of your buyers. If you're selling to movie producers, you need to have enough understanding of the movie industry and how movies are organized and how they work as projects and what are the roles in a movie and how are producers task and what are the what are the backgrounds, how their goal, how they think, all those things. Similarly, if you're selling to CIOs in large companies, you need to understand the technologies they're thinking about. You need to understand their lingo, their language, their concerns, and, and their goals. Product marketing requires left brain and right brain thinking. You need to be numbers driven, think about business metrics, you need to think about revenue, you need to be good with Excel and spreadsheets, and you need also to be creative and be able to think out of the box and come up with new strategies and new ways of thinking. I think fundamental for anybody who is not only in product marketing, but in marketing in general, is have at least a little bit of sales experience. If you have an opportunity to take a sales job for a year, take it. If not, you can shadow a sales team. You can spend a full day with sales. At the least, you need to spend as much time with your sales team as possible. If you're in a company with a sales team, that means naturally being you can be on the phone with an inside sales team. You can be on the street visiting customers. Or if, if you're in, in, a, in an environment like retail, spending time in the retail stores where you're actually seeing how the store managers think and how customers walk in and what they look at is fundamental. And that gives you the industry context that I was talking about. Understanding the industry and more importantly, the mind of your buyers. What is a career path of a product marketing manager? Well, I think if you, if you look at many CEOs, they have product marketing in their background. Why? Because they have this unique ability to, to merge strategy and tactics. If you, if you think about product marketing as the center that connects product development, marketing, 
and business strategy that gives you exposure to so many areas of the business which gives you the opportunity to move to other areas of the business as you wish. One of the nice things about this role is that by being exposed to all these other, other roles and other skills, you may find something that you're more passionate about. It could be market research, or it could be go-to-market execution, or you might even find out that you're, you're a great person to go into sales, and that might be your career path. So the, the good news in product marketing is that once you have all these skills and this experience, it sets you up for very good career success. And in general, product marketing managers are very well paid. Great, let's talk about product marketing charter. I think in, in most companies where I've started as a product marketing leader, if you ask 10 people, even leaders in the organization about what is product marketing's role? What are their main responsibilities? How should they be measured? It's incredibly difficult. I've never gotten a consistent answer in a company. How can you be successful in a role when the person who hires you doesn't know what you're supposed to be doing? How can you be thought as somebody who's having an impact in an organization when the organization doesn't know what you're supposed to be doing and when you're doing a good job and when you're doing a bad job? So this is my perspective on what are the, the key things that product marketing should do. First, product marketing needs to be responsible for the success, for the market success of the product portfolio. It could be one product, it could be multiple products. By talking about products, I also mean services. It means the product marketing manager needs to be accountable for making sales and for making the product successful in the long term. Not for this quarter numbers or this month's numbers, but for the long term success of the product. This also means that they need to be not only held accountable, but they need to be empowered to make the changes necessary. The second part is that marketing, product marketing needs to build a deep knowledge of the market, of customers, competitors, to be able to guide not only roadmap and strategy, but also the go-to-market and all the other sales and marketing efforts. This is a key point because the single point of value that product marketing brings to an organization is not knowledge about how to launch products. It's not being super creative in writing copy. It's not that you're a great communicator or presenter. The, the single thing that makes product marketing useful and valuable as an asset to a company is your knowledge of customers. You need to be the team and the, the persons who really understand how customers think, who've been in the customer's shoes, who have the data about customers, about competitors, about non-customers, understand how the market works, and that knowledge is essential for the business. So getting that knowledge is, is critical and becoming the voice that shares that knowledge inside the company. Third, you need to be able to communicate a market position. And by communicate means not only building the market position, like what is your messaging, what is your story, what is your position, but also a position that is communicated via different channels, social media, data sheets, website, whatever it is that, that your company needs to do to talk to customers. And that position needs to be differentiated, so it needs to be unique. Your core competence as a company needs to come across. Your brand values need to come across. It needs to be clear so that your customers understand it in a very simple way. In, it could be in a billboard, in a few words. It needs to be defensible, meaning it needs to be credible and people need to understand and, and agree that yes, you are a company that, that offers certain value and then monetizable because you can have many market positions that are great, but you cannot make money on them. By adding monetizable here, it means that when you're choosing a, a, a marketing position, you're basically defining how you're going to make money as a company. You can determine that you're going to be a low price leader. You can determine that you're going to be high end value. And that determines your company's ability to make money. It's very tempting and it's actually very scary to see many companies who have a lot of value that could quickly go into the mode of discounting and talking about price. So the, the part of your market position is to be monetizable and you need to be focused and you need to stick to your position. It's, it's critical. And last, you're going to arm sales. Just like in the previous step, your market position is going to be communicated through the rest of the marketing team, through the PR team. You're just giving them the knowledge and the position that they will be communicating on your behalf. You need also to arm other persons who are going to influence your sales, which includes 
your direct sales team, your channel sales team, it could be channel partners, could be other people who sell on your behalf, or your distributors. It could be people who influence, could be salespeople in retail stores. And giving them all the knowledge and the tools they need to be successful. How do they compete? How can they increase their sales? How can you be their best friend? So let's take this in, into one step deeper. When we talk about market success and accountability, here are six key things that product marketing should do. First, you need to have revenue plans by product. You need to understand what is the revenue, how is it going to grow, what can you do to influence it. You need to understand the pipeline. You need to understand how is the pipeline going and as a predictor of future results. What can you do to influence the pipeline? What are the customers that are in, in, in your customer base and what customers do you want to have in the future? How do you optimize the buying process? How do you eliminate the friction? How, how are customers thinking uh, through that buying process? But not only the buying part, but also how do you retain those customers? How many, how many activities can you think about to keep more customers and keep customers happier and loyal and increase their lifetime customer value? How other, what other products are available in your company or through your partners that you can sell to existing customers? And last, integrated marketing campaigns, meaning by being accountable for the market success, is the product marketing responsibility to think about an integrated, integrated marketing strategy that combines the power of all your other marketing resources and teams. Again, social media marketing could be influencer marketing, could be retail, could be a team that is doing point of purchase promotions. All those things need to be combined into a consistent strategy and it's the role of product marketing to be that central point where all those marketing campaigns are, are centralized and, and are thought about. The second part is customer and market knowledge. These, these are the six things that, that I think about when I think about market knowledge. The first one is market planning. Market planning means what is the market landscape? What are the customers out there? What are the segments of the market where there are opportunities? How are customers going to use products and what, what are those use cases? Out of those use cases and market segments, which ones are attractive in terms of being able to produce revenue? Out of those that can produce revenue, for which ones we are well positioned as a company to have a stronger position than we have today? What are the competitors that play in that same market? Where are, what are the gaps that the competitors are leaving and what are the opportunities that the competitive, the competitive dynamics in the marketplace are creating? What are the exact customer needs what are those needs that are not being met today by, by other competitors or by our own company that are gaps in the market that create opportunities? What is the right pricing strategy? Where are we leaving money on the table? Can we be more aggressive in certain segments of the market? So not only taking that knowledge of customer certain markets, but applying it to your, your overall marketing strategy and really company strategy. The next step is communicating market position. So naturally, messaging and positioning should be the responsibility of the product marketing team. But also, not necessarily content marketing as, as an activity, but the content marketing strategy. What is the content that we need to influence the target customers that we selected so that we can move them ahead in their buying process? What is going to be the content that's going to position our company the way we want it to be perceived? How can we build our brand through content marketing? What are the types of content that our customer wants? Does our customer, target customer prefer videos or they prefer infographics? They need to be long videos, could be 30 second videos. What is your sales strategy? How are you going to capture th those customers' minds and their attention and get them to a process where they learn about your company and they decide, yes, these products or services are the ones I need to solve my problems. Product marketing is to own the collateral and the website. Again, it's not the execution. You don't need to know Photoshop or know HTML. It's, it's the owning the content, the strategy on the collateral and the strategy on the website. What does the navigation look like? What are our customers going to go on our website looking for? What are the key words that we need to be using in our text? The same with media outreach and PR. Product marketing is mainly responsible for taking that position and talking to the press. And through influencer marketing and in, in some industries that are fairly technical or complex, there might be a set of analysts that might, you might have an analyst relation function that might be important. We'll spend more time on influencer marketing in lesson four. Last but not least, product marketing needs to be 
the sales team's best friend. They need to be like Dr. Q in James Bond. There's, James Bond would go to him saying, hey, I need more tools. I need more knowledge. Give me some secret sauce so I can go and, and be more successful. Product marketing owns the enablement and readiness for the sales team, creating sales tools, performing sales training, enabling channel, again, indirect sales tools, giving them the proof points that are going to make their, the points that you're trying to make defensible, giving them could be benchmarks, it could be quotes from influencers, could be many other things that are going to prove that you're really the product that the customers need to work on. You need to not only understand what are the objections, but also help them with objection handling. Equipping sales for success means give them the tools so that they are prepared when a customer has an objection so it doesn't catch them by surprise and they already have the answer at hand and the materials and the proof points to manage those objections to accelerate the sales process. Great. So here is a visual that explains the role of product marketing as a process. I think nobody thinks in terms of bullet points. Organizations are kind of living organisms. That's why I like this, which is more of a flow. And if, when you look at this, it's a flow of knowledge. And that knowledge starts at the left with the knowledge of the market, of customers and competitors. We take all that knowledge and turn it into market insights. Market insights means condensing all that information, processing that information, and producing summaries of that market knowledge that can be spread across the organization. Sometimes there's a separate market insights team, sometimes there's a research team. I think it's very critical that the market insights is completely tied with product marketing at the hip, or is part of the product marketing team so that the information can continue to flow. So product marketing is gonna work with product management to build the products that customers want. It's gonna guide, as you can see, the arrow going down. It's gonna guide some of the requirements that go into product management. We'll talk more about how these requirements flow. It also can produce a list of gaps and priorities in a, in a product portfolio to, to corporate development or business development to either go find partners that help uh, complete or fill those gaps or find companies that the company may acquire, depending on your industry. Then as you move forward to the left, there is a market position that is communicated through analyst relations, press relations, and influence relations. Basically, product marketing talks directly to the market in this capacity. And then it creates a go-to-market execution strategy that's gonna be executed by different teams, international teams, segment, sales, marketing, channel, etc., guiding the strategy and the go-to-market. And at the end, all this means that product marketing is gonna have the success accountability for the entire product line. Individual product managers, product marketing managers might be accountable for individual products or for product portfolios. But it's very important that we marry the idea of accountability and empowerment. If a organization wants product marketing to be accountable for success, they also need to be empowered to make the changes that, require, that are required to drive that success. So hopefully this, this visual will help you um, define and understand how product marketing works and maybe communicate it to the rest of the company. Hopefully you might actually be able to adapt it to your own industry or to your own companies. Every company is going to be different. Great, moving on. One of the key things about product marketing, th thinking about skills, is that it's where strategy and tactics combine. I've heard companies or people ask the question, what are more important strategy or tactics? And s someone asked me, it's like, it's like saying you prefer your left leg or your right leg. And I think a more accurate question was, do you want to use nuts or bolts? And I think at the end, the point is that they need to go together. And a strategy that is not based on the tactical ability to execute is a bad strategy. A strategy that is not implemented tactically is just words on paper that are useless. The same way, tactics that are not built and don't add up to a strategy are just sometimes could be effective as a tactic, but they're not gonna, not gonna add up to company success and they're not coordinated to get where you want to be. It's, it's like walking around in circles. So product marketing, I think, has the opportunity 
in a company to play the role of where the strategy and tactics get together. Because your knowledge of the market and the industry and your ability to think strategically, you can build a strategy, but you can also coordinate with the other teams in the, in the company to execute on those tactics. And by this, I don't mean that product marketing is better or they're better people than anyone else or that any other marketing team. I'm just passionate about product marketing because it's ability to influence the other marketing teams. I'm not suggesting that the rest of the marketing organizations should report to product marketing. I actually haven't seen an organization that does that. But a product marketing manager is able to influence the tactical execution for one main reason. And that main reason is you understand customers better than anybody else. And because the tactical marketing execution teams want their marketing campaigns to be effective, they are going to be, they want them to be based on, on good customer knowledge and they need them to map to a strategy. So in a way you need to build your reputation. You need to prove that you understand customers than anybody else to be able to make this work. And, but also in this slide, as you can see, as you know, I realized this after uh, I had built the curriculum, if you look at lessons two and three, market research requirements, pricing strategy, customer segmentation, targeting, positioning, all those things are strategic activities. Even in lesson four, developing a value proposition, messaging, influencing strategy, sales strategy, it's all strategy. And only at the end of this, you end up producing tactics and you end up executing. This has a number of implications. First, it shows you how strategic product marketing should be and could be. But the second part, it shows you that if you think about this as a process, where you start with market research, and then you do segmentation and targeting, and then you develop market positionings and messaging, it means it takes time before you get into execution mode. And the caveat here is that if you go straight into execution mode, you might fail because you don't have the strategy behind you to support your, your tactics. So being a good product marketing manager, having a good product marketing function requires patience, requires having the discipline of doing the research first, building a strategy first, and then going and executing. Great, let's move on. So how are these roles usually uh, alive inside the company? As, as we said before, it's usually, it's very common to see a company has a product manager. In some industries, it might be that a product marketing and product marketing manager and product manager are basically one and the same thing and, and one role and it could, it could work very well. In some organizations that doesn't work. So they, the companies usually add a product marketing resource to work with product management. One of the things that, that a few companies think about is what are the skills and background of those two roles? In my experience, product marketing needs to have a technical background to understand the industry and customers, but it's mostly aligned into sales and marketing uh, and business strategy in general. And product managers, if this is a company where product managers own product development and guiding requirements and project managing new product releases and so on, they tend to be more technical. They tend to have an engineering background. And again, this is not about one is better than the other or one person is more important than the other. It's simply that we need to take into consideration this background and skills for the traditional or the typical product manager and product marketing manager to assign the right roles and responsibilities. In fact, the next one, which is, I think, a better place, is when product managers and product marketing work together and they're integrated at the hip and they're a team that they jointly own the responsibility of both building great products and making those products successful. They need to be a partnership where surely one of them is going to have more marketing skills, the other one is going to have more technical skills, but there are a lot of other skills that are not going to be perfect. You're not, you're not going to be able to hire a perfect product manager, just like you won't be able to hire a perfect product marketing manager. So by having two people in a box helping each other can be a very synergistic solution. In, any, in other companies, I've seen also having a broader team where you have a business product manager who owns more of the roadmap and the business planning and the pricing strategy that also works with a technical product manager who owns more of the technical implementation of the product, of working with engineering and product development teams, and a product marketing manager 
that owns the go-to-market activities and the traditional marketing activities. This is also a good environment. I think it's important to just think about these four models when determining how to structure a team or even knowing these four models to know how you're going to divide these responsibilities between these teams. Great. Last but not least, let's chat about the product life cycle. This is the traditional product life cycle where you have a product that is introduced and it has a period of growth, has a, a time of maturity and then decline. Naturally, you would expect the maturity phase to be much longer. Product marketers would like to see the introduction phase to be shorter and the decline to not exist. But this is, you know, it's the reality and, and most products will have a decline phase where hopefully you will have more products that will take their place. One thing that is traditionally in product marketing, they've been thought about the company that looks at introduction, just launching a product. Here's a new product we're going to launch in two months, go and build the collateral, go put some stuff on the website. That is the, the worst place to be as a product marketing person because it just focuses you as a very tactical execution on an introduction phase and doesn't give you the ability to influence a product life cycle. In fact, I would make the argument that this product life cycle view is a little bit myopic. So here's what I want to propose. First, the, the first part is, is understanding market opportunity. Under each one of these phases, I've written a few bullets that explain what are the main activities that are responsibility part of marketing that influence each one of these phases of the product life cycle. In market opportunity, understanding segments, opportunity analysis, market requirements, understanding the competitive landscape, so basically finding out where can we be successful as a company? Where are the places in the market where we should compete and where we should not compete? Which places are going to give us more money? Second, product design, providing customer requirements. And we'll talk about requirements in a, in a second in, in a bit more detail. But understanding use cases, how are customers using product? What kind of customers? What is the buying criteria? This is fundamental. Somebody who's thinking about buying this product, what are the key things that the product must have? What are the pricing ranges that the product must meet? What are the performance characteristics that the product must meet in order to be successful out there? As, as an example, if you're selling, I don't know, cars to a specific customer segment, it must have at least 30 miles per gallon and must be under $30,000, right? What are those buying criteria that just at the very high level that are fundamental for the success of the product before you actually start building it? Those should be the product design goals that go into the build phase, as opposed to letting a, a product development team go and build products or services on their own without understanding who's gonna buy them and what are the requirements for them when they're ready to buy. How are you gonna package products? How are you gonna price them? How are you gonna position them? All these things should be done and thought about before you actually start building products. In, in an ideal situation, imagine if you already have the press release built before you actually start building the product. So you know exactly how you're gonna launch it, you know exactly how you're gonna price it, and you know exactly what position in the market you want to win. Great, next phase is building the product. In this phase, product marketing can be extremely valuable. We need an advisory council, meaning a set of customers that are, can be early adopters that continue to provide feedback on the product. They're the first ones to start using it before it's actually launched to a broader set of customers. They can provide references. They can give you quotes. They can be your endorsers. You can be the influencers in the market. You can help build proof points of the quality of the product. Product marketing start building, you know, in the case of a car, you can start testing the car and see what is the actual mileage. You can give it to I don't know, Top Gear and let them give it for, for a ride, take it for a ride and, and let them talk about how good the product is. Then we move into the launch phase. Once the product is ready to launch. This is obviously a place, a time in the in life cycle where product marketing is especially busy. Doing the media outreach, enabling sales, understanding how customers buy and eliminating their friction, coordinating all the go-to-market tactics, generating leads, optimizing the process of generating leads, and very important, win-loss analysis. It's surprising how few companies do win-loss analysis, whether you're in retail or in B2B, B2C, understanding why customers buy your products and why they don't buy your products by means of direct research. And we'll talk about it in the next lesson. It's, I think, fundamental to give you the market knowledge to execute on this lifecycle marketing in an effective way. 
The next phase is basically selling. It's, it's just the product has been launched. It's now a phase of maturity. It's the longer phase of cycle. I, I think a lot of product marketing people will think my job is done. I'm going to go look for the next product we're launching. Or they, they have the mindset of, hey, since we don't have any new products in this category, I don't have to worry about it. Well, that's, a, that's wrong. Because you need to think about customer retention. You need to continue to improve the buying process. You need to continue to eliminate friction. You need to continue to monitor the pipeline. At the end, if you're accountable for the success of the product, you need to continue influencing this to maybe even extend the maturity cycle for the product. Maybe there's things you can keep adding to the product. Maybe you're in an industry where this is more than a linear process. It's an ongoing cycle where the product is continuously improved with the feedback from those early adopters, with feedback from your advisory council, where you're continuing to adding more requirements and continue to improve the products so that this, is, this never ends. You basically are responsible for maximizing the value that of everything the company has invested in creating this product or service. And last, well, sometimes products reach their end of life. Sometimes products become obsolete. If you're in retail selling clothes, well, in, in, in the, we all know that by the end of the season, uh, you will need different type of clothes. Uh, some styles might, might go out of fashion. In technology, there might be new versions of products that you might be using. And so it's part of my control to think about what are those bridges where you can take the, the customers and give them alternatives that are going to continue serving their needs so you don't lose your customers, you continue providing them with other products and other services. What is the process to end of life a product? Meaning if you have a, an installed base of customers who are using your product, what are you going to do with them? You cannot just turn off and ignore them. In some cases, whether you're in telecom and you have customers using all generation cell phones or very, you know, you think about when, when all TV went digital, right? The, the government and the industry had to think, what about all the people who have those, those uh, old antennas, the rabbit ears antennas, and are just getting TV over the air? What are we going to do with them? How are we going to give them an alternative that is going to be acceptable and is going to have minimum impact to our company in terms of costs? So think about that process. And at the end, think about customer satisfaction. Because if you upset your customers at the end of life, that's going to impact your ability to get new customers because they, they would know and you will build a reputation that if you go with this company, they will not treat you well when the product goes out of style. Even think about, you know, Apple with the iPhone, right? When the iPhone 5S comes out, Apple needs to think, what do we do with people who have the iPhone 5? Do you have a trader program? And, and customers are getting concerned. Hey, if I buy this phone in a year, it's going to be obsolete. What are going to be my options? Even thinking about this at the forefront of the process with complex like T-Mobile and others who are now offering a system that gives you a guarantee of renewing your phone every year or even every six months. Uh, you've maybe seen those, those TV ads from Verizon, right? Where, where they're promising you where that if your product goes obsolete or you think it's obsolete or you just want a new product, we'll give you the option of getting a new product every six months. At the end, this is basically a life cycle of the product in the company and, and how it should give you a vision of how important is the product marketing role in influencing every single aspect of, of your company's success. I think this is one of the last concepts. Uh, this is particularly useful, I think, in technology, but I, it can be applied to, to many other areas. When we think about the life cycle of the product and, and how product marketing works with other teams, product marketing should own the market requirements document. It's a document that says, this is how the market is built. These are the, the different type of buyers, the opportunities we have. Here's what we recommend in terms of how we approach the market. Then together with product management, they work on product requirements, which means, okay, based on this opportunity in the market, here are the product releases that we think we can build in these timeframes with these capabilities to go address those market requirements, those market needs, and make some money. And then product management, typically works with a product delivery team or an engineering team to build a functional requirement specification document. Basically, okay, if that's what the product needs to do, here's how we're going to implement it technically. Here are, here are the processes on how we're going to deliver the service. Here's how we're going to build this product and so on. At the same time, product marketing goes on and starts building one messaging document. That messaging document is going to capture the position on the market and it's going to influence all the marketing materials. In, in marketing communications and the rest of the execution. 
parallel to the product being built in most cases. That's an ideal situation. What's really important is that, as you can see, this is a flow of information from, from the market knowledge we got in the beginning to understanding markets, to having a messaging document, to communicating to the market. Unfortunately, what happens in most companies is that they go quickly to marketing execution. They go and build products and they go and build marketing materials. And those are not coordinated. Those are not based on, on the position and the market research that is needed to be done. Or in, in probably in a better situation, it, it's, uh, they might be coordinated, they might have a consistent message, but because there is not a central messaging document, messaging needs to be thought over and over and over again. And the marketing team spends time thinking about what is the messaging for the website. Then they start thinking about what is the messaging for the collateral, messaging for the point of purchase, and repeating and repeating the same process all over again, as opposed to doing it once and getting it done for the rest of the life cycle of the product. Great. So that takes us to the end of this lesson. I hope it was useful. In terms of additional resources, this company called Pragmatic Marketing is been around for, I think, somewhere like 20 something years. And they focus on, on training and providing knowledge on, on product management and product marketing as a competency. They built a framework. Here's a link to getting that framework. It's not perfect like most frameworks, but it, it's another point of view, probably a bit more, it's very detailed and it's something you might find useful. They also have in-depth training courses in person if, if that's something you, you wanna do. And here's, here are the assignments for the lesson. This is what I encourage you to think about when you take all this knowledge and, and get back to, to your desk, get back to work. First, how clear is your company about the role of product marketing and your responsibilities? Do your coworkers need know exactly what you are being accountable for? The biggest one risk is basically that they don't know if you're useful or not to the company. The biggest risk is that they're expecting you to do things that you are not thinking about doing, so you actually are missing on their expectations. Or they don't give you the, the empowerment to do, go do your job. Second, evaluate your responsibilities and identify blind spots. For example, have you been thinking about win-loss analysis? Are you doing proper market research? Have you thought about a process where you take knowledge to market requirements to position to go to market? What are the things that you, you are not doing and the things that you should be doing or could be doing better. Three, then taking these two things into account, build a plan. It could be a simple plan, it could be hopefully you can write it down in a piece of paper, it doesn't have to be super complete, but basically build a plan to evolve the product marketing role in your organization to get to a better place over the next six to 12 months. I don't think planning for longer is, is useful, given that we live in a world that changes so fast. And last but not least, Find your area of passion and build your career plan. So finding your area of passion means if you're passionate about product marketing, keep building your skills here. If you think you'd be better in sales, start exploring and use your role in product marketing to start exploring that opportunity and build your career plan because nobody else is gonna build it for you. But it's your responsibility to become the best product marketing manager you can be or to become the best at whatever you choose to do in your organization and product marketing can be a very enjoyable, very rich, and, and full of learning and experiences to help you whatever career path you choose to, to follow in the future. And with this, you've completed lesson one, the product marketing role. We're gonna have a live discussion November 19th. I wanna thank you for your attention. I sincerely hope this was useful information. Here's again my tutorial handle and my blog. If you want to visit and give feedback, and uh, I hope to chat with you soon. Thank you so much. Have a great day.